Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. So today we are going to discuss upon an identity management uh, platform which is called Hyperledger Indy uh, that can be used to manage decentralized identities as well as uh, digital credentials with the help of blockchains. So we are going to cover Hyperledger Indy in general. So we will go through the overview of Indy and then we will have uh, we will know about uh, how deeds are recorded in the Indy ledger and then we will go through an, a hands on tutorial on Hyperledger Indy. So the keywords for this lecture are identity, Indy and DIDs, decentralized identifiers. So what is Hyperledger Indy? So indeed Hyperledger Indy is a project under the Hyperledger Foundation. So uh, this particular project Hyperledger Indy provides the tools, uh, libraries as well as some other reusable components that can be used for providing digital identities which are rooted on blockchains. So basically using this Indy we can use identities which are interoperable across uh, different administrative domains and as well as applications and different blockchain silos. So this Indy platform uh, kind of provides a way of representing identities and storing identi identities on blockchains as well as uh, decentralized, uh, I, I mean decentralized identifiers and digital credentials, the verifiable credentials and uh, verifiable presentations. So the key characteristics of Hyperledger Indy are the following. So it is a uh, a DLT based platform, so distributed ledger uh, purpose built for decentralized identity. It is not like that Indy can be used to store uh, DITs or some other digital credentials on existing blockchain platforms. Uh, rather, Indy provides its own ledger which can be used to store decentralized identities. So, it is uh, Byzantine fault tolerant by design. It uses the Indy plenum consensus protocol, which we will see is BFT. And uh, the identities which are stored in Indy are globally unique and resolvable from the ledger without requiring any uh, intervention of any centralized resolution or authority. So, from the ledger itself, the deeds can be queried and fetched. And then also, Indy supports verifiable credentials. So, VCs can be uh, stored and I mean, can be obtained uh, in an interoperable format and it also supports zero knowledge proofs for presentations. So, zero no with the help of zero knowledge proofs, uh, what we can do is uh, suppose I want to uh, validate a claim from someone else, uh, then uh, without even knowing the actual value of that claim, I can validate it against some conditions. Okay, so, we will look at how this works in details later. So, if we consider a uh, decentralized, identi decentralized uh, identifier management uh, architecture like this. So, here we can see several components like the DIT subject. So, the DIT subject is the uh, subject which the DID or decentralized identifier refers to. And then this particular DID uh, will also will be uh, addressed by a DID URL. Okay. So, this is the unique identifier through which it can be addressed and then of course, this DID is uh, associated with the DID document which is controlled by a controller. So, in this entire architecture, the verifiable data registry is a very important component since in this on this registry, the DID documents are stored and they can be uh, they are stored against uh, the DID URLs. So, given a particular DID, the DID documents can be resolved from the verifiable data registry. So, the verifiable data registry is a very important component and if this is centralized, then decentralized identifiers do not make sense uh, as such. So, what uh, Hyperledger Indy does is that it kind of it implements a version of uh, verifiable data registry. So, now the verifiable data registry is replaced with Hyperledger Indy. So, from this diagram it seems like still Hyperledger Indy is a centralized component and uh, deeds are being recorded on the same platform which is Hyperledger Indy. So, what how does this help? So, actually the Hyperledger Indy ledger is not a single uh, node or single entity instead it is 
it looks kind of like this. So, the Indy network will be composed of several uh, Indy nodes. So, these Indy nodes are basically independent uh, nodes which are participating in the Indy network and uh, helping I mean carrying out the Indy ledger. So, uh, the deeds are now being recorded on the Indy ledger uh, which is a distributed ledger and uh, this, this, this is maintained by all the nodes which are uh, distributed. So, how do we access the Indy network and deeds stored on Indy etcetera. So, in order to write applications which will be using decentralized identities, digital identities and digital credentials which are stored on the Indy ledger, uh, Indy provides us with an SDK. So, the, with the help of this Indy SDK, what we can do is we can connect to one of the Indy nodes or one or more of the Indy nodes and then we can query the Indy ledger. So, as a participant, I can create my own Indy node and participate on the Indy network or I can use some other, I ca connect to some other existing Indy node and then carry out my uh, tasks uh, depending on wh what are my uh, trust issues. So, if I trust a particular node, then I can just use it. If I do not trust a particular node, then I can connect to multiple nodes which already exist or also start my own node. So, there are several Indy projects actually. So, Indy, this Indy is kind of an umbrella project which has these sub projects. The first one is Indy Plenum, this basically implements Byzantine fault tolerant protocol. So, the BFT protocol implementation which is based on RBFT. Okay. So, RBFT is a very popular BFT protocol, redundant uh, Byzantine fault tolerant protocol. So, Indy Plenum is an implementation of that and using the Indy Plenum consensus protocol, uh, the Indy node actually builds the blockchain functionalities uh, and defines the identity specific transactions. So, Indy ledger is built for storing identities and retrieving identities etcetera. So, Indy node implements those functionalities. And then finally, there is Indy SDK. So, Indy SDK provides the APIs for the I mean to the applications for accessing the Indy network. So, uh, using simple uh, uh, this Indy SDK provides simple APIs uh, in many languages. So, it has many wrappers in different languages such as uh, Python, JavaScript, etcetera. So, we can use this Indy SDK and its wrappers to access the Indy network easily. There are some other projects also, but these are these three are the most uh, important ones. So, how do we actually install Indy? Now, while installing Indy, we have to actually think about installing two components. The first one is how do we uh, start an Indy network or how do we run an Indy node so that it can participate in an existing Indy network. So, an Indy network is actually called a Indy pool. Okay. So, to start an Indy pool, what we can do is we can clone the Indy SDK using this command git clone and the URL to the uh, repository of Indy SDK and then move into that directory and then run the two docker commands docker build uh, this one and then docker run. So, this the first command docker docker build hyphen fci indy pool dot docker file this creates a docker image with the name indy underscore pool and then this image can be directly run in order to set up a pool of three indy nodes okay. uh, sorry four indy nodes. Okay. So, it will create a pool of four indy nodes. Uh, there are alternative ways of starting the same Indy pool. So, there is another way using which we can do. So, I have uh, or we have already created an Indy pool image so that it would be easier for anyone to start an Indy pool. So, you can simply use this command one command docker run hyphen itd hyphen p then the port mappings then this particular image tag. So, if you run this command it will directly start up a new Indy pool with four Indy nodes fine and those Indy nodes will be running in these ports. Uh, there is another way of starting uh, the Indy pool also. So, there are many alternative, but this one is the easiest one and uh, otherwise you can build Indy node from source and get the latest version of Indy node. If you want to use the latest version of Indy node and start it, then this is the way to do it. 
Okay, so apart from Indie Node, so there those steps were for starting the Indie network, starting an Indie pool. But we also need to connect to the Indie pool and then do some transactions. So for connecting to the Indie pool and building our applications that can interact with the Indie pool, we have to use the Indie SDK. So how do we install Indie SDK? So here are some simple instructions for Ubuntu Linux platforms. Uh, for other platforms, you can uh, actually go to the Indie SDK repository and you will find instructions there. But for Ubuntu, the steps are very simple and you can follow this to set up your uh, Indie SDK. And after you have actually installed the Indie SDK, which is called a lib Indie, uh, you can install the Python 3 wrappers for it. So you can do pip install Python 3 hyphen Indie to install the Python 3 bindings for the Indie SDK. So once we have both of these ready, so we have the Indie SDK installed as well as the Indie pool running. So Indie running the Indie pool is just running one test pool. Okay. So in production, I mean for big Indie pools, how to connect to them uh, is a different issue. Uh, those require different steps. So the Indie pool instructions that I went through are for creating a test indie pool of only four indie nodes and which we will be using for learning hyperledger indie so we will be going through a very simple scenario for our hands on demo or tutorial so we will see that uh, there are uh, three participants a university uh, alice who is a student of this university and who is applying for a job in a company fine so for applying for a job, Alice needs a transcript from her university and she needs to present that transcript uh, or proof of that transcript uh, in the job application uh, to the company. So for doing this simple scenario, what we need is we need a transcript verifiable credential issued by the university to Alice, which Alice will present to the company. And helping all these operations, we have the Indie network, which will be storing deeds, uh, credential schemas, credential definitions, as well as revocation lists. So we will see how we can use Indie to do all of this. So uh, in this particular lecture, we will cover only uh, identity configuration in the Indie network. Specifically, in Indie network, there are uh, different roles, okay, which are important. So in an Indian network, all the different nodes which are participating in the pool can have different roles. So the most important role is a uh, steward. So what are stewards? So Hyperledger Indie is actually a permission network, but it is a public permission network. So the ledger can be read by anyone publicly, but it can be written to by only some selected members who have permission. So it is a permission network, but it is publicly readable. So stewards are actually the pre-approved participants who can register new deeds or these are called very names, register new deeds with verified identities into the Indie ledger. Okay. So for registering new deeds or very names, we, we need stewards. And then there is another role called trust tankers who are actually issuing verifiable credentials. For example, in our case, uh, university will be a trust tanker. So who will be issuing verifiable credentials and to other users. So they form the link between the users and the stewards. So the stewards approve the trust anchors and the trust anchors then use verifiable credentials and uh, issue them to different users who can later use them. Okay. So we will uh, go through the steps of configuring deeds for different participants in the Indie network. So the, the this involved uh, three steps. First, of course, connecting to the Indie pool then getting ownership of a steward's deed. So as I said, only steward can register very names. So we need to get hold of a steward or actually configure a steward or get uh, control of a steward in order to register very names. And then register deeds for government, university and uh, company. So I will explain the role of the government while we do this. Okay, let us jump into the code. So first, what we will do is we will start the Indie pool. Okay. So you can just open up a terminal and type in docker ps. So this will show that no containers are running. Then if you run this particular command docker run, 
and then this image and give the port range 9701297080 then on this port range your ND nodes will be running. So, if you hit enter you can see that it is starting a new container. So, if you do docker ps again you will see that only one container is running. So, actually inside this one container all four ND nodes will be running. So, what you can do is you can copy this container ID and you can uh, SSH into it or basically uh, drop a terminal into it. So, docker exec uh, hyphen it then paste this container ID and then space bash. So, it will open a bash shell there. Okay. So, we are now inside the ND pool uh, docker container. So, there are several di uh, directories etcetera. So, let us go through the logs. So, we can read the logs located at slash var slash log slash indie sandbox and then node 1 dot log or node 1, 2, 3, 4, any one. So, we can see that several log lines are coming up. So, which means that the indie node 1 is running. Similarly, there are node 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Fine. Next, we need to actually uh, extract one artifact which we need to connect to the indie pool. So, that is located as slash var lib indie sandbox and then pool transactions genesis this one. So, if you look at the contents of this file, so you will see that uh, it has four different sections which represent four participants of the indie pool that we created. Okay. So, we have to actually copy this and we will be using this uh, to connect to the ND pool. So, copy this contents and go to a uh, create a file basically let me open a text editor. So, open the text editor of your choice. Now, create a new file here and name this one uh, you can name it anything but i am naming it pool1.txn and then paste the components of that trans of that genesis block fine so the, the this are these are basically four lines corresponding to four nodes and you can see that there are many information like keys uh, metadata uh, etc and there is also the ip address uh, and the ports. Okay. So, we can see that the four nodes are running at four different ports. So, this in this information will be used by the ND SDK to connect to the pool. Okay. So, next what we can do is we can actually start writing an application which will be interacting with this ND pool. So, create a new file name it main.py. So, we will be writing it as a python code. Okay, so, in this uh, python file what we can do is we can uh, start defining an async function. So, async space def space run and then so, for now we, we can put anything let us print something. Okay. And to run this async function, so python in python to have async functionality we need a library which is called async io. So, let us import that import async io okay. and then let us run it. So, loop equals uh, async io dot get event loop and then using this loop we will be running the run uh, function. So, loop dot run until complete run fine. So, let us see if it is working fine. So, python 3 space main dot pi. Okay, great. We can see our output the print statement. So, next what we would like to do is we would like to uh, connect to the indie pool. So, that would be our step 1. Fine. So, we will define a pool, pool equals a di dictionary and we will input some properties or values. So, the name of the pool is pool 1 
then we would need to actually uh, get the genesis genesis transaction so from pool1.txn file we would get the genesis transaction and use that to connect to the pool so we are uh, uh, basically opening the ledger and using pool1.txn file so pool1.txn is a json that is why we are uh, you using uh, so we are using this okay so after you have defined the pool let us connect to it so connecting to the pool so we need to uh, use this pool to connect to it so we will be using await pool dot set protocol version 2 which is an ind function so let us import uh, pool first so pool is coming from the uh, ind sdk so let us import that from ind import pool fine we also need to import the ind header so let us import that also So from indie.error import error code and indie error. Okay. So here we are basically uh, doing pool dot create pool ledger config and passing the pool name and pool config and then what we are doing is pool dot open pool ledger. So this line line 29 is actually opening the pool. So, if you if your indie network is not running or indie pool is not properly configured then it should give an error. So, let us try it out. Okay. So, it is working fine it did not give any error. So, uh, it is able to connect to the indie pool. So, let us go to step 2. So, step 2 will be configuring steward. So, actually the pool we started is consisting of 4 nodes and all of these 4 nodes are stewards. And the way these stewards are run is using a predefined seed value. Okay, so, we, we would be using that. So, we are defining steward as this. So, name, wallet config, wallet credentials and then pool handle and then there is a seed value. So, we are specifying the seed as some zeros followed by steward 1. So, this is very important. So, using this seed what uh, NDSDK can do is you it can generate the private key. So, it can deterministically find out the private key and then basically con start controlling the steward. So, those stewards are run using this seed. So, that is the reason we are using it. Okay. So, on line 40 we can see that we are doing did dot create and store my did. So, we have initialized the stewards wallet, uh, but or no we have not done that. So, we have to initialize the stewards wallet and then we can do create and store my did into steward wallet. So, for initializing steward wallet or any wallet we can define a function create wallet. Uh, so, we have to write this create wallet function. So, this, this is currently not defined. So, we have to write that. So, let us go out of this run method and go to top and write the definition of steward wallet here. So, this would be the steward wallet method and it uses uh, the indie wallet. So, let us import that also and also import did. So, create wallet basically creates a wallet wallet dot using wallet dot create wallet API and it uses the wallet name and wallet key etcetera. Okay. So, at line 76 uh, it has already creating I mean saving the steward identity into its own wallet. So, yes. So, we can see that there is no error and it is working fine.
okay so at this point we have access to the steward now the step 3 would be to actually configure the deed of the other participants three participants i guess uh, government uh, university and as well as the company So to register the deed, it would be same. I mean, similar steps compared to the steward. Of course, the seed value would be missing. So we are providing name, wallet config, uh, then wallet credentials, and we can see the role also. So there is a role variable here. So now we have to define a function called getting very name, so that the very name for this particular participant, which is called government, can be registered through a steward okay so this is the method for getting a uh, very name and it uses uh, the send name function so we have to define that also so send name is basically the actual transaction which ind supports so while i mean for registering the did uh, it needs to send a name transaction and so we can see ledger dot sign and submit request here. So that is the API call we are going to make. Uh, we need to import ledger also. So let us do that. Okay. So we have getting very name defined. So we can now use that to I mean register the very name for government. Let us run this. Okay, so we can see that the very name of government is registered successfully. We have the deed which is in the identifier, then we have a role 101. So this role 101 is corresponding to the role trust anchor. So the trust anchor value is uh, is mapped to 101 inside Indy. So similar to the government, we can also now register the very names for the other participants. to the university and as well as the uh, uh, not Alice but the company. So for Alice we are not registering any very name because Alice to is not issuing any verifiable credential to anyone uh, as a result its own DID need not be registered somewhere anywhere. So similar to the government, we are defining university and company. So both are trust anchors. Uh, you can uh, make the university trust anchor, which is required because, because it will be issuing a credential. The company, you can give some other role also, but anyway, we are giving it the role of trust anchor. And we are using getting very name function to register their very names. Okay, so we can see that there is no error and for all these three organizations, the government, the university and the company, uh, very names are registered. So we went through the three steps, uh, firstly connecting to the Indy pool and to connect to the Indy pool, we saw that we need the Genesis transaction, which we can get from the Indy pool uh, container and then uh, we see we saw that how we can get ownership of a steward using the seed value and then using that particular steward we are basically registering uh, deeds for government university and company uh, so actually we are here handling all of the participants from the same application code so we have written as one uh, main.py file and inside that main.py file we are opening the uh, transaction pool or connecting to the Indy pool and then doing transactions on behalf of all the different participants. 
the stewards, the government, the university as well as the company and Alice also. So, he, this is for test purposes only and for demonstration only. So, we are using uh, all accessing all of these participants from a single file. In reality, what will happen is that these codes for uh, individual participants will be separated out. So, the steward will be running its own application and uh, the university will be running its own application and likewise. So, in conclusion, we covered Hyperledger Indy. So, uh, Hyperledger Indy is a public permission network and which has different roles for different participants, specifically stewards, uh, trust anchors and more. And then we saw that how we can use stewards for deed registration. So, from the next uh, tutorial or from the next lecture, we will see that how we can uh, use uh, Hyperledger Indy to actually issue verifiable credentials and then do verifiable presentations and uh, see how uh, different participants can validate, I mean uh, present and validate claims through digital credentials. Thank you.